Hello, my name is Wayne Kortz. I'm the South Regional Section Manager here at the Minnesota Pollution Control. In this section, we're going to talk about land application rules and requirements. There are numerous rules for the land application of manure. The first and foremost is Minnesota Rule 7020.2225, which deals with the land application of manure. And that has includes in it the nutrient rate requirements, manure and soil testing requirements, manure management requirements, record keeping requirements, and setback requirements. In most cases, a lot of these requirements will be determined by your site manager or your company owner as to the nutrient rates and soil testing and manure management plan and record keeping requirements. You will need to know setback requirements though. Also, Minnesota Rule 7020.2125 deals with manure stockpiles. So one of the main things is you have to deal with is setbacks. In this case, we have a pamphlet called the Applying Manure in Sensitive Areas. This pamphlet can be requested from any pollution control agency office or any local county field officer. Your company may also have a copy of this on file. Rivers and streams have specific setbacks, and this is measured from the ordinary high water level. In any case, if you inject manure, there's always a 25 foot setback from the ordinary high water level of the stream or river. If you're surface applying, there's a 300 foot setback measured back from the ordinary high water level. Now, in some cases, intermittent streams or those that streams that only flow during rainfalls or uh, runoff events ha also have setbacks. And they can be identified on your USGS quadrangle maps, which can be requested from your local SWCD office or the MPC offices also have copies sometimes. And those are the same setbacks as rivers and streams. Setbacks are not required if there's a grass buffer in place. So if you have a perennial stream, one that flows all the time, if you have a 100 foot, 100 foot buffer of grass, um, you do not have to have setbacks. If you have an intermittent stream, ones that only flow during uh, rainfall or storm events, then a 50 foot buffer is required. Intermittent streams maintained as grass waterways are exempt from any setback requirements. In any case, if, during winter application, there's a 300 foot setback to any stream or river, regardless if you incorporate or not. Lakes and protected wetlands. They must be identified on the DNR protected waters or wetlands map to be counted as a protected uh, wetland. This is also measured from the ordinary high water level. And again, there's a 25 foot setback if you incorporate the manure or a 300 foot setback if you surface apply. Setbacks are exempted if there's a grass buffer in place. And that buffer must be 100 feet wide for lakes or 50 feet for wetlands. And again, a 300 foot setback is required for winter application. Drainage ditches. These are measured from the top of the drainage ditch. And again, there's a 25 foot setback if you're incorporating the manure or a 300 foot setback if, you, if your surface applying. The setback is not required if there's a 50 foot grass buffer in place. Again, a 300 foot setback is required for winter application. Now, if the drainage ditch has a protective berm, there is no separate setback requirement. In many cases, spoils from digging the drenches, digging the drenches may be there, but this is a case-by-case -case basis and you must be careful as some of these areas may allow uh, surface water to encroach the ditch. So may, if it's only spoils, be careful. If there's a side inlet, that would also require a 300 foot setback around that inlet. Open tile intakes can be incorporated right up to the intake, but there's a 300 foot setback for surface applied manure. Now, 300 feet is about six and a half acres inside. In size. So if there is an area that has surface tile intakes in your surface applying, you may want to plan ahead and incorporate that manure around those intakes as six and a half acres is, is quite a large area. Rock inlets, blind inlets, and French drains are all considered open tile intakes and require the 300 foot setback if surface applying. Road ditches. Manure application directly into the road ditch is prohibited. Road ditches can also be intermittent streams and would require setbacks sometimes. So those are a case by case basis. Floodplains should follow protective measures if there is a described MMP, MMP from the, the farm. If not, incorporate the manure is highly encouraged. Otherwise, it may be a violation of manure must not be applied in a manner that will cause pollution to waters of the state due to manure contaminated runoff if flooding occurs. So in other words, if it's in a floodplain, you should be incorporating the manure. Sinkholes, there's a 50 foot setback from the sinkhole and a 300 foot, 300 foot setback upslope for surface applied manure. The 300 foot setback not required if there are berms or diversion in place around the sinkhole. Wintertime application manure. 
Winter application is considered any time the soil is frozen or snow covered unless manure can be incorporated into the soil. In this case, in all winter application, there's a 300 foot setback to all sensitive features. Now for short term stockpile sites. In most cases, there's a 300 foot setback to from a sensitive feature to a manure stockpile. The exemptions are a lake, which there's a thousand foot setback, and wells, which can be anywhere from 100 to 200 feet, depending on what type of well it is. Now, in some cases, there is a exception to the rule that says they can be as close as 50 feet if the flow distance is 300 feet. And there is a scenario here, if this was the stockpile site and there was a hill, it has to be 50 feet away from the river or 300 feet flow distance if it had to go all the way around the hill. So that's when they talk about a 50 foot horizontal distance or a 300 foot flow distance is 50 feet horizontal or if it has to flow 300 feet to get to the river. There's also other requirements for the short term stockpile site and the amount of manure can be stockpiled on one field and that is 320 acres worth of manure. And that is based on the nitrogen rate. That stockpile must be removed yearly and it must have two feet of separation to seasonal high water table and the top five feet must not be more coarse than sandy loam. Must be solid manure, 15% solids, or three, or be able to stack on a three to one slope, and construct on a slope of 6% or less. And many times you will not be dealing with this as your site manager will be dictating the location of these stockpile sites. But it's important to know the basic understanding of stockpile requirements. Thank you.